Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Holly and you're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade. Despite dips and disruptions from new variants of COVID-19, 2021 was a fairly positive year for economies and markets in most parts of the world. Growth was good post the severe recession of 2020 and financial markets recovered robustly. But will 2022 be more difficult as the pandemic is still not over? Time will tell. For today, the ASX 200 closed lower, dropping 24 points or 0.32% after setting a new 50-day high. Over the last five days, the index has gained 0.75% and is currently 0.88% of its 52-week high. On the sectoral front, six of 11 sectors ended lower. Energy was the best performer, gaining 0.91% at 3.49% for the past five days. The best performer today was Adbury, up 5.5%. This was followed by Santos and Brambles. Others following closely behind was Ingham's Group and Macquarie. And then on the flip side, in the red zone, Prometicus was the top loser. It stocked down by over 9%. Other stocks trading in the red were Immugene, Clunavel Pharmaceuticals, PointsBet and Tyro Payments. Shares of the payment solutions provider Tyro plummeted by over 5% today. In a tech sell-off witnessed earlier, Afterpay shares also fell over 4% to hit a 52-week low. Other BNPL giant Zipco also fell by 5%. Then John's Lion Group has successfully completed its fully underwritten entitlement offer announced on the 9th of December. The retail component of the entitlement offer closed on December 30, raised about $9 million. This follows the successful completion of the institutional placement and institutional component, which raised about $221 million, taking the total equity raising to 230. Then, Troy Resources has entered into a series of agreements that will, if approved by shareholders, achieve a recapitalization of the company. The company is engaging with the ASX to satisfy the boss's requirements to enable its shares to recommence trading. Though these proposed transactions, Troy will convert approximately 18.7 million of its current debt to equity and raise new funds of about 7.2. Meanwhile, shares of Simic Group traded in the green zone today after the company Leighton Asia was selected to construct a data center campus in Jakarta for a multinational tech corp. The contract will generate revenue of about $103 million for late in Asia. Now before we move on to other trending updates, it's time for a short break. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all on our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calpine TV. Hello, welcome back. Sage here to continue the last trade by Calpine TV. Stocks in Asia were mixed Wednesday as investors worried about interest rates increases that dragged down the U.S. stocks from a record and extended decline in Treasuries. To top it off, Omicron cases are rising globally, keeping investors on the edge. And shares in Japan edged higher and they fluctuated in Hong Kong. They slipped in China, where equities had their worst start to the new year since 2019. South Korea's Kospi index lost 1%. Indian stock markets also moved in a narrow range with a negative bias. And overnight, banking and industrial shares led the market, lifting the Dow to a fresh record, while the tech-rich Nasdaq retreated amid the worries over the high interest rates. The cryptocurrency market was nursing its wounds today as the crypto cart was trading with mild gains. However, hawkish voices across the globe kept the gains in check. And the global crypto market cap gained over a percent to reach the 2.23 trillion US dollar mark compared to yesterday. 
In other news from across the world, after a hawkish turn by the Federal Reserve took some steam out of cryptocurrencies at year's end, while largely sparing other risk assets, central bank policy is taking a key role in the debate about the outlook for tokens in 2022. Meanwhile, in India, cryptocurrency platforms are facing increased scrutiny from tax authorities for goods and services tax. Evasion are unclear about applicable provisions under the country's indirect tax regime amid regulatory uncertainty. And thank you for your company on that report. But that's a wrap, folks. Hope you found the market closing commentary informative. And we'll be back tomorrow live from Sydney as close as possible to 9.30 in the morning with the first report on the pre-market scenario along with the important updates from the global markets to prepare you for the trading day. And that's all for now. Take care and stay safe. Sage signing off.